Next year, up to 20 postgraduate students will be coming together here at the University of Warwick. They'll be the first intake in a pioneering doctoral training program in complexity science. Their aim is straightforward, yet daunting, to answer some of the big questions facing scientists and academics all over the world. We want to more reliably understand how complex systems with many parts can generate surprising behaviour that you, you wouldn't have predicted from the individual bits. A nice recent example is the European power grid where one company briefly interrupting a supply line under a river in Germany led to five million customers losing power all the way down to the south of Spain. There's a built infrastructure there, there are companies interacting there and most complicated of all, individual people involved as well. And, and another area perhaps that you might want to delve into? To give you a, a, very, a very ambitious example at the absolute outer reaches of our, our uh, scope would, would be to try to contribute to understanding how crime hotspots move around. Complexity science covers a host of areas such as climate, ecology, quantum mechanics and plasma physics where it's really pushing at the boundaries of knowledge. I'm looking at fluids and what happens if you get a fluid, and in my case it's a plasma, okay, most of the universe is full of plasma rather than gas and it's full of magnetic field so you have energy in magnetic field and in flow of particles and it's not smooth, it's very clumpy, you get kind of quiet behaviour and suddenly a big burst and nobody really understands how it works. It's called anomalous transport and that means things crossing barriers that they shouldn't be able to cross and it's quite important, I mean an important application actually is in energy production. I'm also interested in plasmas for fusion and so what you're trying to do now is keep a very hot plasma like the sun in a magnetic bottle on the earth so it's a, it's a way of making energy that's clean, okay. It's quite hard to keep things in a magnetic bottle, it tries to get out. And So if we can understand how to keep it there um, then we can have power stations uh, without burning fossil fuels and so that would be a real breakthrough if we could get that. So how beneficial is it then to bring people from all kinds of disciplines together in, to, to answer these kinds of questions? I think it's vital actually because the only way you can really make fast process, progress is to um, have ideas going from one field to another. I mean a nice example is we made some breakthrough in understanding the sun's atmosphere by looking at uh, works done in the financial sector and looking at fluctuations in stock prices, the mathematics of it. So they had an idea and we kind of borrowed it for our stuff and now there's been a sort of flow back in the other direction. So you can really make fast progress when you can share ideas. It's quite hard because you need a common language and that's kind of interesting as well. From astrophysics to Warwick Medical School, where the new complexity scientists may help understand some of the problems faced by medical practitioners now and in the future. Complexity science brings together people from many different disciplines and that's its real strength. The doctoral training programme is a, an exciting development because it provides us with a focus for finding ways of formulating the issues we have in healthcare in such a way that people with the tools are, uh, in complexity science can then tackle some of these issues. Now getting the issues formulated is something that has to be done in dialogue with, for example, the mathematicians. Now, back pain is a particularly interesting one because there isn't a biological explanation for quite a lot of it. So it's not something that uh, by looking at the structures of the back we seem to be able to solve. So we need to look at this in a different way. And so by using perhaps data from the epidemiology of back pain, that's how many people have got it and who they are and, and where they are, and then formulating that in a different way, we may be able to understand it as, a, as a, an emergent phenomenon, which is something that complexity sciences deals with. How are you going to approach training these, this new generation of students here? We want them to start with a good appreciation of complex systems, how to model them mathematically, how to simulate them computationally, how to relate that to real world and experimental results and interpret those. But as they go on into their PhD project, we clearly want them to have the experience of some real depth of expertise in, in a particular facet so they can fine tune, those, hone those skills, see how they really work and the sharp end in practice. If you could design your, your ideal complexity scientist, what qualities would you be looking for? 
They need to be students who've done an undergraduate degree with some mathematical basis where they've seen analysing problems mathematically take them to results they would not otherwise have got just by s simple up a bit, down a bit type reasoning. They're going to learn how to analyse complex systems in particular mathematically, uh, to simulate them computationally and to relate that to real-world data, draw conclusions about real-world systems, how, we, how they behave, how we could manipulate them, uh, and better control them. They're then, of course, going to go on and do a three-year PhD project where they'll get into real depth on a particular research topic, which will be much more in discipline. Uh, that's their opportunity to really show what they can do, and cut their teeth on, on a specialist problem that no one has dug over before. Uh, but it's mission critical, of course, that we give them the support that they can transfer those skills to impact in other problems in their future careers. We're always hearing about the importance of end users um, to the university. To what extent are they involved in this project? End users are crucial to us. We, we already have eight commercial organisations uh, contributing some sponsorship to the pro programme. They are all contributing some substantive resource. And even more, more important to us, they're a source of problems for us to work on. The, this is actually a, an element of the programme stipulated by the Research Council EPSRC, who are our principal funding agency. And uh, it, it's mission critical that we deliver some impact on practical problems. And it should be the case that every student on the programme will have the opportunity whether in a mini project for just two or three months or even for their PhD project, to work on a problem that has come out of a real, the real world.